slow-moving salamanders make easy prey for garter snakes. However, one such creature, the rough-skinned newt, protects itself by secreting a neurotoxin that paralyzes nerves and muscles by blocking sodium channels. This is sufficient to deter most predators. Some populations of garter snake have evolved sodium channels that are resistant to the newt's toxin. These snakes have the advantage of being able to eat the newt and survive, but the toxin slows the snakes down for several hours. Thus, they sacrifice crawling speed for this advantage. In an environment without rough-skinned newts, the toxin-resistant snakes would not have an advantage. However, in an environment where rough-skinned newts are present, they would have a clear advantage over their non-resistant peers. While their reduced speed would make them vulnerable to predators, this would be outweighed by the advantage of being able to eat poisonous newts. Because individuals in a population differ in many ways, scientists cannot easily assess the cost of a specific adaptation in nature. One way to investigate this question is by creating cloned or highly inbred populations, and then artificially manipulating the population to study the effects of changing a single gene. Plasmids can be used to transfer a specific allele to individual members of the inbred population. Using this technique, investigators measured the cost associated with resistance to the herbicide chlorosulfuron in the flowering plant Arabidopsis thaliana. As a control, some plants received a plasmid that did not contain the herbicide resistance allele. Still other plants received no plasmid at all. Scientists then counted the number of seeds produced by each plant. Based on what you know about the benefits and cost of adaptations, drag each data bar representing the number of seeds produced to its correct label on the graph. The plants that did not receive a plasmid produced about the same number of seeds as those that received a control plasmid, but the plants that received the resistance allele produced significantly fewer seeds. Although the resistant plants will survive better in the presence of herbicide, the cost of maintaining resistance is fewer offspring. Therefore, non-resistant plants will outcompete resistant plants if no herbicide is present. Let's look at another example. In some mammals, such as deer, lions, and baboons, one male controls reproductive access to many females. Such species tend to be sexually dimorphic, that is, the males look dramatically different than the females. Generally, they are larger and bear weapons, such as horns, antlers, and large teeth. Scientists can assess the cost of this sexual dimorphism using an approach called the comparative method. For example, researchers have measured the number of parasites feeding on males and females of sexually dimorphic species, and found the males to be more susceptible to parasites than the females. In other words, there is a high sex bias in parasite load. Then the researchers compared the parasite load of males in the sexually dimorphic species to that of a closely related but sexually monomorphic species to determine the cost of sexual dimorphism. What do you think researchers found regarding the sex bias of parasite load in species that are not sexually dimorphic? Place the data correct location on the graph. methods and field methods to study the costs of adaptations, and the conclusion remains the same. When a species acquires a trait that provides a competitive advantage, that trait usually imposes a cost in some other area.